Hello everyone, welcome back. Third day for our ENIOT certified tester training. So brief look team at what we were doing in the first couple of days. Uh, to begin with, uh, we were speaking about one second team. So um, the three main trainings that we were going to be focusing for the next few weeks, um, the AACT being two weeks, then automation frameworks where we go through programming all the different types of framework using Selenium WebDriver, then more of CI/CD integrations. This is another maybe two weeks we would take it into one to two weeks. All right, so we also spoke about live projects team and this is very critical. Uh, team, so for all the members who are part of JPAC program, I would want you to, um, I will invite you into these groups for two projects team, any or text and any or um, ACT, there'll be one and any or text, there's another one. The client projects also that will keep adding you, but this two are most important ones. So any or certified tester, this specific project team, I am assuming all of us will involve. Um, so that is where you'll get a little experience, but from any X, it is more on uh, for the JPAC members. This is for the JPAC members only. So uh, please make sure if you are planning to be a JPAC member, this is a great time. Um, otherwise, you'll have to wait for another one and a half month for the next batch to start. So what it is it that we're speaking about team uh, different topics that we will go through. Uh, we will be touching upon a lot of them, but primarily manual to automation. How do we go around? Um, then we spoke about AMC theaters.com as the application. We wrote few simple tests for that. So let's take a look at that. Where am I? Okay, here. AMC test cases. All right, so um, we are at a very beginning level team for an application. Um, just showing you one of the ones which is already open. For example, this one has about 150 plus test cases with, uh, you, you can't imagine the amount of effort that would have gone into this kind of a regression suite. So all this in a very, very correctly organized manner. What is it doing? How is it and so on? We'll all be learning getting into team. Uh, but let's keep things simple at the beginning so we understand the concepts very, very well before we can start applying them in practical projects. Now, all we did is let's break an application into modules. And once we break an application into modules that are easily identifiable and can mostly be worked independently, then we have a great start. Under each module, we'll start writing test scenarios, test where we do certain steps and expect uh, to see certain results. So we have search itself. There are three search uh, search types that we've used, and uh, then we have login incorrect and sign up insider. So five test cases that we created, and I believe for each of these we wrote some steps. Now these steps are basically what we do in manual testing as well. And what we mentioned is one of the key attributes that we need to give is test data and typically there will be one test data that will go to one step. So even if you're signing in as a user, you'll need username and password. There are two sets of data, but then that will go into two different steps. So this is very important team for us to understand uh, as to how we are writing the steps. Any questions so far on what we did with uh, creating this test cases here in a simple Excel sheet. And then uh, post that what we did is we took the record option to see how a simple operation like this will work and what happens here. So when I click on the run execution of it, let us see how the execution happens on the application itself. So it's going to amctheater.com. It's still loading the page. So if you notice on the top left corner team AMC, the logo was loading. So it's wait, it waits for the pages to load before it performs the task. And at any given point, I'm able to see that a green 
um, color on the step means that everything worked fine. Now team, when it comes to automation testing, there's a lot that we will encounter. So there is, this is one way of doing your automation test runs where we have a tool which records runs and we can do it. That's our Selenium IDE. And then we have the other way, which is our most preferred route uh, and how we practically implement everything in real life. So using Selenium web driver with Java, Python, C Sharp, whatever be the programming. And accordingly, instead of Eclipse as an ID, we can have something else. Or Selenium IDE, we're trying to achieve the same purpose. Now, how does it, the same code from there operate here? Let's try and run this one. Did we write three of them, team? That's nice. And team, I have not yet gone through this so, uh, Eclipse as, as per se. I'm just showing you right now. Uh, there's a lot that we will go very, very deep into this. So let me keep this aside for a second and let's focus on the concept of automation. So um, team, all of you make sure that you are subscribed to the YouTube channel. That way, even if you missed any sessions, you're getting the uh, videos for it. Uh, let's look at day two. What is it that we were speaking about? So the entire focus of automation or overall the world of testing itself is regression testing. This becomes the focus area. Now, why regression testing? We were speaking about it in kind of little diagrams. Let me see where I think this is the best diagram. Yeah, where we going through one version to the other v1 to v2 v3 and so on and each time we are adding new features we're changing some so not only do we have to test those changed modify added features but also test the entire application to see how does it work so there's a lot of repetition in works that happen and um the big challenge one second where did i write that ting 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 There's one um, a turned around version of ERA that I had written. Testing is not sufficient. We were talking about it here. Maybe I wrote it in a diagram. Let's see. So this is what I was trying to say that from manual um, as we go in towards Selenium uh, to automate, we have Selenium IDE or Selenium web driver and both of them are two different schools of automation, just the approach and how things work there. Um, but what was important here, team, is for us to understand that um, how does how do we move from manual to automation? So when we speak about uh, any activity as a human, there's a self built intelligence that we have we are already aware of a lot of things and that's why we are able to perform now the same task if they're given to a kid all right who's like a four-year-old or a five-year-old kid will be unable to perform the same task because they have not learned uh, those skills yet so within humans itself uh, unless there's sort of clarity on what has to be done we cannot expect a consistent output team. Sorry, all right. So for us, from a perspective of um, what automation requires to do, uh, the key things are these team, the what and the where portions of it. So the first one is the what. So when we're talking about a what, we're saying nothing but an action that we have to perform, a command. And team, always look at these using two things. One is your keyboard, all right? And you have a lot of keys out here. And then your mouse, all right? So these are the main inputs for you to give into a system so that basically says what is it that you will do with the keyboard you're typing information you're typing you're sending keys you can click using a mouse you can right click you can tab 
you can hit enter key. There's so many activities that you can perform using these two input. So those actions on what we perform are called the what. The what from a Selenium IDE perspective team is this command out here. So when we're speaking about command is a bunch of different what should we do or actions that we want to perform on the application and it's very English like so it's typically a verb that you give and say that okay this is what I want to do. The next one for us is the where and when we talk about this where this is where the mind the primary difference comes between manual and automation team. So in Selenium ID the where is identified by target and that is where you have to spend quality time in mastering how to identify elements. So now I know what to do. For example, I will do a click or I will do a type or you know I will uh, read text verify that the text is correct I will open a browser or close a browser those are the activities that I do now when we're talking about where how do we identify these as objects or you know how don't how do we know where to click or where to type or which browser to open which URL to go where do we give not URL but all this information as to where you want me to perform so how do you as a human know it when we look at this uh, go to application search for so see it can be ambiguous search can be there anywhere so how do you make sure that the yes the search is here and you click on it for example we're saying enter email or enter password for us because we've been used to working with web-based applications for humans we know where that email address will be or password would be and we have uh, text labels beside it to tell us visually okay this is where it is now from an automation perspective it is pretty blind team it cannot look at anything so what is it that it will look at let me open up the website it's already actually here okay now here's my website so how does it identify any given thing in here so when we do it, for example, if I say that I need to go to search, so you see this icon and you come take your mouse there and you click on it. So how does Selenium know? And that information is the one that is provided in target. So very, very critical. This is day two, let's go to day three. And we will talk a little bit about um, Selenium. ID command target value. So command is your basically what to do and target is where to perform the command on where on the web page team to perform the command. So the and team i'm keeping it very very generic in terms of explanation so get the concept first we'll start filling the details into it as we go along now value is what we're talking about um, the test data that is required now let's first talk about what to do these commands and then we will come to the target portion we'll then talk about the value and we will then write custom selenium ide test we will also do um, improve our manual test excel these are three activities I would like to accomplish team uh, team. Uh, I saw a hand raised if the questions can you please put it in the chat to begin with as I go through I can give um, gap but if the questions that you want to be unmuted for right now, please don't hesitate raise your hand. I will unmute you. So we talked about the commands team like I was saying various commands that we can perform like you know click or type or you know verify text or open close browsers and so on. Now these commands are out here. So way Selenium ID works is very simple. 
uh, it is one of the most simplest IDE that you will see. What is IDE team? Make sure each of these details you will not forget him. Integrated development environment. So why did Selenium HQ.org? Oopsie. Uh, create Selenium IDE and also Selenium web driver. What was the purpose? So Selenium IDE team is one of the very quickest easiest way to test a few quick simple scenarios and play around with an application and so on. When it comes to web driver, you don't have anything as a luxury. Okay. All that Selenium ID gives you is the integrated development environment where you can put all your test cases in the side. You can decide how you want to execute the test uh, in terms of if you have more than one test case, we can do execute multiple test cases at a time or single test case at a time or what is this? I think this is skip a uh, test step or something. Let's look at that. There is this speed of execution and so on and here we have record a test pause a test and this this is your menu bar team so simple features that exist so you look at for example a notepad or that has you know file edit format view help as the menu bar and it has those specific features but what is the difference between notepad and a word word you will see a much longer version of the same with more features and you could do much more playing around with the same thing so it is the number of features that are provided in here and from that perspective ide of selenium is very very simple okay now when we look at this we want to break this whole thing into identifiable portions team so here is where we will talk about projects and test cases this area is about the executions that we will do yes we can also save uh, open tests and all that here is the main test theme our command what to do our target where to do and this is our test data what value do we want to provide now each step number represent one step that it required to be able to execute them how did it learn this so selenium ide has this amazing skill to be able to record and understand whatever happens as you get to web driver team you will notice that you don't have the option to record or see your tests in such a neat manner where you have test cases here and test steps here so this ability becomes a little challenging now <clears throat> So while we're still with Selenium IDE, the, uh, what I really want to focus are on the commands team. So we have one test case right now called search. Let us record one more just for the practice of it and see what happens. A quick record itself team I'm doing. So this is test case one search. This is done. So I'll save this project to C drive trainings. MC Selenium ID I'll say and this becomes a Selenium ID type of a file That's how it is saving it as a format So there you go team. I don't know if I can open this with I haven't tried recently open with um, Where is it why doesn't it show anything here? I'll see if I can just put it into a yeah, it's got the details more like a JSON format. Nice. It's changed the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm just uh, looking at a team, so don't worry about this detail for now. It is just interesting to look at. NC team, that is the fun part of automation. As long as you're working on this, you'll see a lot of areas that you can play around. 
Now team, uh, I've saved this. I want to create one more test case. So how do I create an additional test case? If I say this is creating a new project, open project, save project. Um, running in CI, this is just a help command. Executing, so this is done. Tests, okay, there we go. Now I got it. So I had to actually select that. When I clicked on executing, it was showing me the executing version. Then I clicked on the tests and I have come here, team. So team, uh, while I understand that ID is not something we do not use too much in industry, you all have to know the details of it very critically. So here is my test case. Every step is out here and each step, let's try and take a look at it first and then we'll record one more and see what happens. So the first command that you look at here team is the open command and anytime you want to edit or do anything about one step at a time you basically go to this out here and in fact um there used to be a help also for this reference there you go sorry when did i forget so for this command when you click on reference it will tell you what is it that it will do so this says opens the URL and waits for the page to load before proceeding. This accepts both relative and absolute URLs. So now what is it that I gave as a target? I just gave one forward slash. If I say open forward slash, how do you think it would even ever go to a website team? That's not possible. That's not sufficient information. Where is the URL itself? The URL goes at the heading team as a base URL and using that home page we'll say navigate so when we just give forward slash it is going to that link now if i change this target here and i say login for example and i click on run what it will do is it will take me to that call login so it just still worked because it could find search there uh, but the idea is where do you want it to navigate so i want it to navigate just to the home page and that's what we give the next one set window size so i think this got recorded when after clicking on record we maximize the screen or resize the window it said okay now i want to resize it to this screen so the dimension is something you could change you could play around and you could also do a lot of things with the team like maximize minimize switch windows slowly but set window size is one command that is basically saying what is the size going to be the most frequently used couple of commands team that you'll keep seeing is click then we have type or even send keys but as you go along you'll notice that it's all send keys for us when we get into web driver click is the easiest command team it uses your mouse to click on an element now till now the target was basically okay a sub url or relative url to it uh, or the size of the window now when i say click the next question becomes target where should i click on and to be able to identify these what we do is we use various methodologies team id name link text and partial link text CSS, XPath, tag, class name, um, maybe one or two more team. Now, what is it that we are saying out here and how is it identifying these? So this requires some amount of OOPS concept and we'll discuss that very briefly. Um, see, what we're trying to do is we're saying that I need to click but that identification icon underscore search see this detail here saying id equals icon underscore search using this text is how we are able to click on that specific one if this was incorrect then it will not perform team so i changed that now it's trying to replicate the same thing and it's waiting for the third step the first two steps are green when you're executing that means that this step they worked fine there was nothing wrong in it
and it takes a default of 30 seconds as a default timeout team. That's what it has inbuilt. And wow, it clicked on something. It, it actually took something. This is close to it. It should not have done it team. If it's not correct, it should not be assuming something, but I expected it to actually fail. Let me see why did it do? So I've put the screens one besides the other, so it's easy for me to see. The feature that we use team, let's go to the home page exactly like it shows. See, uh, one of the other things while you're doing automation, always remember that the websites could be responsive. So responsive is when one of the easiest ways to make out is when you menu bar changes to this vertical three bars and you click on it, the whole thing comes up. Unlike when you have a regular view where you have your menu bar here. So you keep minimizing it, it will become responsive. And then you go further, you'll also seeing the layouts becoming more mobile uh, size, device size friendly. So this is an important feature for any application and that will be continuing team. So when you're doing automation testing, you also can fix the size of the application before you test it. All right. So right now I just increased it so that's easy for us to see. Now side by side, let me change it back to what it was team. I can underscore such. Do you see these two buttons besides it? select target in page and find target in page. These are the two options that are given by Selenium ID to make our life a little easy. So in our quest of identifying, I know I can click on this or type here and on. How do I identify where to? That is all provided with this help team. So if I say select target in page, oops, no. I find target in page. I already have the target written here detail. So if I say find target in page, do you see that um, kind of slowly shading in and out team? It highlights for a quick microsecond says that is where the element is. Now, how, it, how did it identify? We'll talk about that team, um, basically how it goes to the code level and identifies, but let's look at the next one. So here it is saying that the type CSS equals search input. So there's a detail that is given here differently. Now if I click on find target in page, do you see something highlighting or anything changing? Where is it? It's not showing here also. I mean, I knew that it wouldn't because see, this once we click on the search icon that is when that field shows up so at this point if i say highlight it should be able to find this where is it is it doing it <laughs> i don't see it doing it team but it is definitely highlighting this element and then the next one is verified results this would come only when the um, final result is made so how do we go about identifying them? Let's take a very brief look initially and get that idea very clearly. So click where to click, type again where to type and then the value as to what to type. So you change this here from a joker to what else is playing right now? Countdown, okay, let's we'll say countdown. and rerun this test just to see what is happening. It's again taking time here. Do I change it back to the right one? Oh, it's actually waiting for the page to load team. That's why it took time, otherwise no. So it's search for countdown and it's got eight results and it did not match with the 12 results and that's why it failed. So in your Selenium IDE team, whenever you see a red, that means that it tried to execute a step and something didn't work in it. Either there was an issue with it or you were verifying something and it didn't happen. Your log is the place team where whenever you do execution at a step-by-step -step level, it tells us what happened to the step. 
and if there was an issue it would also tell us what the issue is for example in this step six it found this information but this is the actual value did not match the expected value so you have your test data that needs to be consistently updated so i run it now for eight we seeing the page loading here so once the page loads the next step happened oops <laughs> Now, do you know, team, why it failed still? Can anyone help me? Isn't it eight? And that's where a lot of human errors keep happening when we're working on manual team. Right, so team, and this is where I think each of us for being in the quality engineering quality assurance space you need to be very very pixel sensitive you need to have an eye for the detail and if that's something you could not figure out by looking at why did it still fail then look again team till you find and build that knack of as soon as you look at something that something is wrong you should be able to make a sense out of it so here eight results came eight results came but see the main difference being i still am saying joker here while what is expected there is countdown and so let's fix that and rerun so see how many times very simple by changing certain things we are running to see how things are working and that's one of the simple test cases that we have team now let's create one more quick one add new test case oopsie this got generated i don't know how let's delete this this is the first one i guess add a test case and i'll say this is tc02 underscore which was the other one login right let's do login login incorrect team today tomorrow uh, maybe the next day also will be a little slow because this is a very critical components Then we'll be flying from there. So now I want to Write my own test case here In the first one we did a record and easily it got me all the commands and I could do it But let us say I want to write it here team the best way to be able to do it is look at your manual test case which is luckily already there for us and we can see the steps here i don't think we need to click on sign in twice but let's make sure about it so what would the first command team be team and the only way to learn this is by doing a record earlier by seeing by experience whenever you have a question go back to something you've done earlier as a reference or do another record team and just by that repetition you'll come to know so now we already know because of what we did few minutes back that open is my command so as soon as i start typing it'll show me all the commands that are available team so there are so many commands within selenium id itself and then um, a few lesser ones actually it comes to web driver but the fact that um, each of them what it is doing to a large extent you should be able to get a good idea now open is my command what will my target be team so we have not put a forward slash here that will take me to the home page i'll put that and this is by memory of what we saw earlier so we're not doing something out of the blue now we want to click on sign in so great i know that click is a command so as soon as i write c-l-i-c-k you'll see click click at double click double click at so what could click be reference clicks on target element like a link button checkbox radio button now what is click at click at is where you have let's say a button and in that button where is it that we want to click so here one for example there is this show times okay do i want to click here 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 where especially when you have maps or things like that which are pixel specific uh, it becomes important team one second everyone screen got froze okay sorry so I'm saying you know like clicking where here 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 so that xy position to say where to click on is provided 
So if I say click at, then I also have to say what, where should I click at? So first is located and then the argument, the XY position like 10, 20 um, and so on. So this double click also, like just like your keyboard double click command, we are right now just on a simple click. Where should I be clicking on team? We are trying to log in. So we're clicking on this sign in out here. So how do I recognize this sign in team? So the way it is done team is by doing something called as inspecting your code. Before I go there, let me explain you the way we identify objects. I've, I've been doing this uh, identification session for so long. Sometimes I get confused that have I covered this or no. So team as a topic by itself element identification deserves a lot of attention and this is the key difference of how we are moving from manual to automation testing. Now what are elements? What is about identifying? Elements are nothing but whatever you see in a web application. It could be a link. It could be an image. It could be a simple text field. It could be a button, a checkbox, a radio button, a table, a video, whatever team that you see in an application, each of them are called as elements. If any one of you were earlier exposed to HP QTP or UFT, we used to call them as objects in there and we used to store them in some a place called object repository and there was the local object repository and used to be a shared object repository and the bulk of HP QTP or UFT micro focus UFT now uh, is around that. How do we identify objects? And one of the toughest things that people saw in HP uh, QTP at that time was descriptive programming. They felt it was very difficult. Descriptive programming is nothing but saying how I want to identify my objects using my own methodologies instead of trusting just the record or adding objects. So that becomes very um, simple, but you just got to learn it the right way. Team. Okay, so every Thing that you see in a web page is an element. Now, if I need to identify an element, the way um, Selenium works is very simple. Team. It looks at the HTML code number one. All right. And in the HTML code, it will go and navigate to try and find an element by using what we call as attributes. Okay. Now, there is also a DOM concept document object model as part of it, but the whole idea is you look at the HTML code team and that is where you find some attributes to identify. Now, what do I mean by attributes and what is the concept of identification? So let us say you talk about a car. Okay, so if it is my car, for example, it has a specific things, right? So I have properties of my car. When I say properties, there are properties that are used to identify my car. Then the properties that are used to describe my car. So how can I describe my car? I can say what make, model, year, color, um, where is it parked, the location, odometer readings and so on. So I can describe my car. And to identify, maybe I can use license plate, VIN number, and so on to identify. So basically with these, it becomes my car. It is personalized to me. Now, same thing, let us say you buy a car and your car will also have similar properties, but the difference is the identifications will change and maybe the descriptions also. It can all be the same and the color itself is different and but then you'll see the identifications will always be unique so these properties build our objects team and they tell as to how they look and how they can be described so if i talk about let us say two bottles um, there's a 300 ml uh, water bottle and there's a one liter water bottle they finally contain the same things inside it but the size is different, the weight is different, and that is how we are able to identify, distinguish them also. They're different products from the same thing. Now, 
these cars that we're speaking about right now are all basically saying that they're belonging to the same class. So my car, your car has the same thing. Now let us say if we talk all together a different thing like a book, then it becomes a different class altogether. Why? The properties that are used to identify a book is different, to describe a book are different. So that is one essential portion of objects team. So how do we identify these objects? Each of this is an object of this class. This is an object of this class. This becomes a new object here of, you know, your books class. So when we take a template of, let's say, that here are the properties, here are the um, descriptions of it, and create a real object, it becomes one instance of it. But they all comply with the same class. What does that mean? The actions or methods that we can perform on it will be the same. What I can do on my car will be the same activities that you will perform on your vehicle team. And they all are coming from our parent class. That is where we are inheriting them. Saying this, that um, whatever car, uh, you know, basic activities like going forward, drive forward, drive backward, turn left, turn right, park, and so on. All of these are common to the car. And for a book, you have different methods. Like you can read a book, you can store a book, you can gift a book, and so on. So this whole concept of real world, how we look at objects and how objects can be identified and what we will do with these objects makes that whole network of how we live team. And the same concept is taken into programming and we say that is object oriented programming system where we are looking at everything as an object. Now Java is one of the strongest examples of this oops concept. So object oriented programming system gives you the ability to look at um, not as just a math or a function or a formula, but consider things like objects and how they behave and how you can interact with them. So we'll handle this team in length when we get to our core Java sessions. But the fact that in Selenium to identify the elements, you will need to look at these elements or you can also call them as objects and find their attributes which become these properties. So whatever you see here that I wrote, this ID, name, link text, all of these are different attribute attributes team that we can find and get. Now, the way identification happens is very simple. If you find an element with an ID or name, and if it is unique, go ahead, use it. It will not fail. If it is a link, then you use the link text that we use to click on it. CSS and XPath are the ones where we will investigate further. And this is where you'll need to master team. How we can identify with a more, little bit more organized fashion. So just with these simple ones, let's explore a few and try and write team. So where's our application? It's here, right? So the first thing that we want to do is click on the sign in. So when we want to perform an action team, so you click right click on it. And I'm using Chrome browser team strongly uh, recommend everyone to do the same, please. Go to inspect. And you will see the HTML code opening up for us. And this is where you would notice you will spend a lot of your time during the automation um, projects team. Consistently, we have to keep going to identify um, where these um, uh, elements are and so on. And you will inspect and you will look at the code like this. So team, at this moment, I'm not going in deep as to what HTML code is and how they behave. But let me give you a very brief overview. So HTML code is all about HTML tags team. So they start with a less than symbol and end with a greater than symbol. Anything we put in that is used to tag it or identify it, okay? So for example, if I say, um, where do I take one? Hmm. So this button is there. Button ID, I'll just copy this. 
right so i right clicked on this text here team went to copy and i'm copying this outer html okay and i get this here now this is how we have put the button details in there so if i need to identify this button all the attributes properties that are used for it are here so see how i can quickly tell you what are the different elements in it okay perfect this is the start of the button here is the end of the button okay in this and i'm not looking at that uh, sign in here team i'm looking at something altogether different i don't even know where it is just a random piece of code in here so this is becomes the html start tag start and html end tag and these are the properties that it is given for this button and i've just taken them into different line so it's easy for us to read now inside this button there is a div and inside this div there are span so for us at the moment what is inside it not relevant but the fact that here see there's an identification called mobile header nav button and that's possibly enough to identify if i need to identify that now similarly for this specific sign in i click right click say inspect and i get to this text team but this text by itself is not sufficient for me <laughs> as of now and i don't want to really confuse you too much into it mm -hmm. let us say go back to target here and the easier way there are a couple of easy ways team okay selenium id gives you this ability but believe me we won't use it too often where i don't have it but i can click on select the target in page this way and it will do that but let me make sure i don't have the responsive view okay select target in page no app is available for this test case either continue recording it or play it back got it so it wants to let's run this test at least it will open up the web browser go till there okay it did that for us i need a bigger browser size so see this and that is one other step we missed remember so i will right click on this no i'll just click on this how do i insert a new step oh no, no not yet so stop this stop ah huh, there you go so now right click worked and insert new command and remember that it was something called set window size or something there you go and basically we're giving it the dimensions here how do we give it i can't give 1280 x800 right how did we give it here oh it came as x itself cool i'll take this size maybe we will make it bigger 1800 1080 and let's run this again once it's um is this the one yeah this is the one and uh, it failed or click nothing yet so where is it stop okay i don't need that anymore so want to identify this so i'm going to select target in page and click on sign in and go specifically and click on the pixel t so at this point you should be able to identify this where is it did it hello there we go so it's got a very stronger version saying css so and so dot nav group item account link and that's fine team what it is given you for now just take it as of now I wanted to try with link text, but the test itself will not run right away. So I thought I'll avoid it. So click at this one. The fourth step is basically looks like we have to again click on this sign in. And here. 
and once we click on the sign in i am then gonna do what enter email in this field team so let's check this at least so inspect email so make sure it goes to the right code team if you're in question always do it again and i've got the html code so like earlier copy this entire outer html and please follow the same directions team longer process i'm teaching currently so you'll practice and retain more and then we will get smarter and shorten it but for now just keep it as long as it's possible so see there are different details out here team just like a car color make model and so on a book author uh, topics and title reviews these other different attributes that we can have and each one have the, a value to it i'm sorry when in need i'll definitely use a combination of it and make it a little bit more complex to identify the elements but as long as i have something like id or name i will try and use it as is so here i could just say command what we're going to do is type into it and i will say the name is the attribute and the value is whatever we get from there so copy this and make sure you put it into single quotes team the best way to make sure have you added the right one is to say find target in page it should uh, highlight but see it's highlighting somewhere not sure if it is doing it correct which one name equals email hmm that's interesting i'm not sure but let's test Team, I do have a hard stop at 7:30. I will see you all back uh, tomorrow at 6:30 p.m. In a day, tomorrow or day after, I'll start with the first live project session. Team, I will invite you as you're getting the basics of it. Now you can start entering it. Any questions, please? While this is happening, it didn't identify. Is it still trying to type name equals email? But what do I want it to type? I didn't even enter a value yet. Team, as you're watching the video, start practicing parallelly, please. Um, I typically do not share the code right away so that you have enough opportunity to see the video and practice. And um, out of every project that we do, I'll keep sharing the code at the end of it. So please do watch the video and practice. Um, outdoor HTML gives all properties, attributes, or unique. It gives everything that is there for that. So basically it gets that entire code team right click inspect and input email. So this entire right from the beginning to end of the the greater than symbol rather it will go all the way and that is what we're getting and go along. We will now start talking at copying XPath actually creating our own XPath. That's what we'll focus on. Another question Selenium ID looks simple uh, then why even one why everyone trying to use selenium web driver sure um, so lot of differences are there for example it is what i can do here is an entire programmatical so i can change these values here i can um, you know put them into conditions or loop through things i can interact with external database apis i can do um tests for specifically for github ci cd so that entire activity can be done on selenium web driver your selenium ide has a very very lot of restrictions team and you start seeing it uh go along making sure the meant the right information oh no it's 31 team um but yes you will see a lot of variations selenium id cannot handle the power of programming that specifically we can get through selenium web driver so when selenium web driver comes the connection is directly more java for me so it's a lot of java commands that i pass and selenium command is very very simple some of these simple commands like navigate find element and do something on it 
don't you have to give an X path? So right. So like I was saying, you have multiple options to identify an element and we're going through one of them one by one and uh, we will do a couple of uh, detailed sessions team specifically on dynamic X path dynamic elements. Um, you know things like vertical scroll horizontal scroll or move uh, and a lot of things that you'll see team. So we'll work on those. Hi Karthik, do we need to have Microsoft Office? Yes, sorry Satish, you asked this very at the beginning. Um, so Satish, yes, uh, as we go along, we will start using Microsoft Excel a lot. So I would recommend for you to have it. Even Open Office could be okay uh, sometimes, but um, I would strongly recommend if you can have Microsoft Office. You need Excel, please, for sure. If we have frames, is it tough to see the element ID? No, it's not tough to see this element ID because even if we have frames, we have to switch between them. Uh, if there are tabs coming up and so on, but if they're within it, none of them team. Uh, in you know, we'll, we see a lot of high level of automation that is happening these days. So even with the latest, um, you know, Yes, angular applications. They're good solutions. We will expose ourselves to plenty of those. In my I, I, I don't think so team. You parameterize them. You could store them on predominantly doesn't take you Sorry, team. All right, everyone. I'll see you back tomorrow. Let's continue with the questions as well. And I'll make sure we these and move. Thanks, everyone. Bye, all.